Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this video. My name is Ron, and back in the 70s when I first started diving, all we had for planning our dives were the US Navy dive tables. Of course, now we have dive computers on our wrists or on our gauge consoles, but as you know, our computers won't work unless you power them. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I replace a user changeable dive computer battery not all are user changeable so check your manual before you open yours and perhaps void that warranty now if the content here is meaningful to you please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this on diving and dive gear let's get that computer open so what do i need to perform this battery change first of all always buy the best battery that you can this one, I usually use the Energizer or the Duracell batteries, the Panasonic, maybe a Sony, anything of a higher quality, because remember, this is going to draw a lot of amperage as it runs the device. So you want a good quality battery. Now, the battery that this uses happens to be the CR2450. So that's here. The O-ring battery and the silicone grease comes as a kit from Aqualung, and that's re recommended. Whenever you change your battery, ideally you're going to change this O-ring at the same time. So let's see how that works. We've got, I've got two Q-tip swabs and I've got a precision screwdriver with a micro screw, flathead screwdriver. To get the process going, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a light a piece of uh, tissue so that I'm not going to scratch the face of the dive computer. You've got four flathead screws, one, two, three, four, that need to be removed. Now, sometimes because this has been soaking and diving in the salt on the ocean, you're gonna have a little bit of salt or a little bit of corrosion sometimes on the inside building up. So careful how you remove the screws. A bright light, of course, is ideal because that allows you to see clearly what you're doing. So let's just remove these four screws and then we'll show you what happens next. What I normally do is I remove one screw on one side, loosen it, and then I come to the opposite side and I would just loosen that one. And then I go around and come back to these two. So after you've got the four screws undone, you wanna just remove them. Make sure that you don't lose these. Got the four screws out. If you look at them, these ones here, you can actually see that they've got a little bit of a white discoloration. That indicates that there could be a little bit of salt corrosion building up on them. Remove the back plate and if it's stuck, then you may need to if you see, stick this in here and just prise it open and that'll come off fairly easy. If it's very stiff, that could indicate a problem. So I'm just gonna bring this off, move it from there. There's gonna be a black rubber o-ring here. And if you look here, it looks like it's got a little bit of corrosion around here. So I need to wipe that off. Of course, this is the offending battery that is dead. As Murphy would have it, it's dying just before I need it on a dive. But it's better that it's dead here than underwater, of course. So looking at the system, what you can see here is just around the edges, there's a little bit of corrosion. I'm just going to take this and lightly remove any salt buildup that's in there. You can see that here. So what I recommend is after you finish diving, maybe put this in warm water and let it soak for a bit. Not hot water, warm. Just warm and let it dissolve any salt that may be on the back of it. So this is where I'm going to use a Q-tip. I'm going to put a little bit of warm water on it being very careful not to put that on the inside and just remove any salt and corrosion on the outside. Now, once again, this is where your bright light comes in handy. So I'm just gonna take my Q-tip and gently pass it over the edges where the O-ring needs to seal and keep the water out of the device. That is right here and you can see around the edges, just a little bit of corrosion. For example, right here. If you're not comfortable doing this and working on small electronics, take it into your dive store. But I've just wiped it off. Just double check now, make sure it's nice and 
dry, there's no moisture. I'm gonna let it air out now and dry for another five to 10 minutes before I apply the O-ring grease, the battery, and cover it back up. There we go, nice and clean. So now that I've let that sit for a little while, it's nice and dry, everything there looks good. So we're just gonna finish up this part of it by picking up your battery. Ideally, you're not gonna touch it on the contacts, neither the positive nor the negative side. Don't touch it, if you do, clean it off. Don't leave your body oils on that. Put this here and just seat it into the spot it belongs. There you go, it jumped right out. And then position the back of the dive computer the right way up. So the serial number was down this way. So I'm gonna position it there. Put my thumb here, my finger here, apply a little bit of pressure, turn it over, and you can see it's actually powering up. That's great, that's what we need. We need to know it works. That's fine, so let's go back. I'm gonna remove the back. So we know the battery is good, and it works. So we're gonna remove that, hold it around by the edges, put it back here for now. Right, so let's see what the next step is. Next step, we're gonna take the back off the dive computer, it's a solid piece, and you can see there's the rubber, black rubber o-ring here. You can see a little bit of grit and stuff on the inside here. This is gonna come off. This one here, this part here, I'm gonna just take my fresh new Q-tip, just make sure all my contacts are nice and clean. Just a gentle wipe should be all that's needed. And that's that. Also, I may take the old one and just make sure that I get any corrosion, if any, off the edge plate of this. So I just want to go back clean. I don't want corrosion there because if it doesn't seat properly, you can get leakage through there. So that looks good there now. Now, ideally, what I can do is I can use a very fine, either a dental pick or an O-ring tool. Well, I'm using just the base of one of the micro screwdrivers that I have. Get it under here and just remove your O-ring gently. I remove the o-ring completely and remember we're going to replace that ideally with a new one now i like to be real with my divers and myself sometimes if you're out in the field you're out on a dive trip sometimes a brand new o-ring kit may not be available so in that case you may have access to a brand new battery but not a new o-ring and that's why i took it off very carefully not puncturing or cutting the o-ring so what I'm gonna do now, if I have to reuse this O-ring, before you can, you need to double check it. So, I, so if I can, I take my three fingers and form a bit of a triangle when I close it like that. And then I take the O-ring and I just pass it through here. And I'm feeling the O-ring gently for any cuts, nicks, sand, anything that may be there. And I've also cleaned it. So it's now cleaned. So there's nothing there except a very, very thin, light film of O-ring grease that came with the original system. I wanna take my Q-tip, I'm gonna extend the end of it a bit. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna get it into here to clean this groove that the O-ring sat in. I'm just gonna pass it around here and I'm gonna clean this properly. You can see some grit, you can see some discoloration as I pass it around indicating that there was a little bit of corrosion. Now you remember at the start when I got this uh, the back off, I indicated that it was a little bit snug or tight due to corrosion. If you look here, you'll see a little groove right here. And that's where you can insert something very fine to help you wedge it off to push it out and open it. Okay, so this is nice and clean now. Got off that little bit of grit there, cleaned up this nicely. One more time, clean this side, nice and clean. Now inspect and look on the inside, make sure there's nothing there. Good and clean, no dust, no grit, no sand. Come back off, brand new Q-tip, just gonna double check. Clean the contacts again. 
no oil, no grease, nothing there. So this is ready to be replaced. Now, how do we grease the O-ring? So this is the O-ring tube that came with the kit. <clears throat> I've actually got a lot, a lot of O-ring grease all over the place. So I'm just gonna use from this old tube for my camera. Just gonna take a touch, just a tiny bit. That's a bit too much actually. Just gonna take a tiny bit and I'm gonna take my finger and just rub a very tiny bit of O-ring grease and coat the entire O-ring just gently. Don't pull on it, you don't wanna stretch it. It has to fit snugly back in. Then I get the three finger method and I just pass it through here, making sure that the O-ring is just a light film. Just wipe the excess off gently. Come over here and place this over it should drop in very nice and easy. So it's back in there. Quick inspection, make sure you don't see anything otherwise, other than what it should be there. So a quick inspection can reveal that there's nothing there other than O-ring grease very lightly. If it's too heavy, you can cause the system to flood. Now what I do is just put a touch of that O-ring grease on the edges, just a touch. Now my screws that were in here as you can see, a little bit corrosion on it. So I'm just gonna take a damp Q-tip again. Just gonna wipe this off. If you've got a little bit of a toothbrush, ideally the toothbrush can be used to just brush this clean. So I would use it with the toothbrush. So I'm just gonna get this cleaned off. Gonna get the other ones cleaned off as well. Right, so now we're ready to put the battery in and close back up and seal the compartment. So again, open your watch straps. They're very rubbery and they tend to flip back over. Now, make sure that the old battery is not the one that you're replacing. Guess who's done that? Now I'm going to take the brand new battery. I'm not touching the contact of the positive or negative terminal. I'm using the clean Q-tip, just making sure it seats properly making sure this is seated. So everything is seated there. Trying not to touch the O-ring. Make sure you've got the right orientation. This is the top. So I've got the top here and I'm just gonna gently seat that in place. So I'm just gonna just gently put this down into place. Get this out of the way. Right, so that's in the seat it belongs. Now for the screws, what I do is I put a touch of that very same O-ring grease. Notice I put just a touch. It's not a dab, it's not a squeeze, it's just a very gentle touch. Just gonna lightly, very lightly, just pass a little bit of lubrication on the O-ring, on the screw seats. So at this stage, <clears throat> the back of the dive computer, this should be sitting very gently, but snugly in place as it belongs. And again, this is where you want to have even pressure. So I'm going to put my thumb on the middle and just press gently on it. And again, I'm going to seat the screws such that I'm going to have this one put in, this one put in, and then go to the opposite sides. So in other words, I'm not going to be squeezing down and applying pressure all the way on one side to damage the o-rings stop just before it's tight and then i'm going to come and i'm going to do the opposite end here for those of you who have ever changed a car tire we're going opposite as well snap good double check on the other side yes i have got power it's working Let's continue on. Okay, folks, so we're ready to do the final touches. And again, the screws are all set gently in place. I'm just gonna make sure and give it one final turn. Remember, it's snug, a little bit tighter, but you're not gonna strip or damage the screws. So it's just what you need to snug them up. Inspect it, make sure it looks snug. You're looking at the line here. Should be good all around. No dust, no grit that you can see. And looks like I'm ready to go. 
So I took this dive computer out the next day and I did a little bit of dive off Singer Island, uh, West Palm Beach. Worked fine. I did 71 feet for 32 minutes on the first dive. Thanks for viewing this video. I do hope the video was of some value to you. If you do have any questions or comments, please drop me a line below in the comment section. I usually reply within a day or two. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you on the next video. This is Ron signing off.